Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and today we're going to learn about the SI system of units or the metric system. So what is SI and how does it work? Well SI stands for System International and SI or the metric system was first published in 1960 uh, during a conference held in France that contained a, a lot of the top scientists and mathematicians and engineers from around the world and what they wanted to do was come up with a, a universal method for measuring things so that way when a scientist or engineer from, say, Japan uh, compiled some data, he or she would be able to share that with uh, a scientist or engineer from, say, California, and the results and data would all make sense. They'd be on the same page, essentially. So the idea of this conference in 1960 held in France was to come up with a way, a universal method of measuring uh, a, a bunch of different things, so that way everybody can be on the same page worldwide. And today we simply know this SI system as the metric system. We call it the metric system. Okay? And the metric system basically establishes a set of about 20 prefixes, prefixes like kilo, hecto, deca, milli, centi, and so on and so on, that we will attach to uh, several different units of measurement that were established during the conference held in 1960 in France. Okay, so. Uh, what came out of the, the conference held in 1960 in France were a set of about seven different measurements uh, of temperature. This right here, K, K or Kelvin, is thermodynamic temperature. Okay, uh, Right here, S stands for seconds. So universally, uh, around the world, when we measure time, we're going to measure it in seconds. Right here, M stands for meter. Universally around the world when we measure length or distance, uh, from now on we're going to measure it in meters or kilometers or centimeters or millimeters or nanometers. Uh, universally around the world when we measure the mass of something, we're going to use kilograms or uh, milligrams, etc., etc. If we want to know uh, how bright uh, a given amount of light is, we will use the candela, which is used to measure luminous intensity. Uh, if we want to know the amount of something, we're going to use the mole. And if we wanted to know uh, or measure electric current, we're going to use the ampere, or amp for short. So these seven main units of measurement are what came out of the conference held in 1960 to establish a universal language that everybody worldwide can understand when we're collecting data on uh, various different things. All right, so before we start talking about the metric system in more detail, let's first take a look at the United States customary units of measurement. That is to say, how do we measure things in the United States and compare them to the metric system? And I hope that you'll find by the end of this video that the metric system just makes more sense for us to use. It's based on powers of 10, and sliding a decimal either to the right or to the left a certain amount of times when we're making conversions between uh, the different units of measurement. Okay, so let's take a look at the United States customary units of measurement first, and then we'll take a look at the metric system in more detail. Okay, what we're looking at here is a table of several different ways that we measure things in the United States of America. The rest of the world is not using the United States customary units of measurement when they take measurements or compile data. Everyone else outside of this country is using the metric system. But in this country, for whatever reason, uh, we are using uh, several different types of units that require us memorizing a bunch of different equivalent statements. For example, when we measure the weight of something in this country, we're using pounds and ounces while the rest of the world is using kilograms and milligrams. Okay? If we want to know the length of something in this country, we're using things like miles, yards, feet, inches, etc., etc. However, the rest of the world is using millimeters and kilometers and centimeters, etc., etc. If we want to know how much space something takes up in this country, we can use gallons and quarts and cups and pints and tablespoons and teaspoons and fluid ounces. However, if you leave this country, they're mostly using liters and milliliters, etc., etc. And last but not least, in this country, when we measure the temperature outside, let's say, or your, how hot your oven or barbecue is, 
we're using the Fahrenheit scale. For example, today is August. It's probably about 90 degrees Fahrenheit outside. If you went outside of this country and told somebody that it was 90 degrees outside, they're going to look at you like you're a little crazy because they're on the Celsius scale. If you were to tell somebody that it's 90 degrees outside in, say, Japan, they're going to look up in the sky and think fire and brimstone are raining down because they are on the Celsius scale. <clears throat> and at 90 degrees Celsius, life does not exist for us. All right, so the United States customary units of measurement requires us to memorize a ton, a bunch of different conversion factors. For example, you're going to have to know that one pound is 16 ounces. One mile is 1,760 yards. You're going to have to know that one mile is 5,280 feet. You're going to have to know one yard is three feet, one feet, 12 inches. One gallon is four quarts, which is the same thing as eight pints or 16 cups. Uh, you have to know that one gallon is four quarts, like we just said, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So in the United States customary units of measurement, you have to memorize a bunch of different types of equivalent statements or conversion factors. And that is not necessarily the case in the metric system. In the metric system, all we have to do is uh, memorize a series of prefixes and the order of those prefixes, and we should be good when we're making conversions between the units. So now let's take a look once again at a table that consists of the different SI units that were established in 1960 at the conference uh, held to establish or publish the SI units of measurement. All right, so here we go. Uh, we just have a table here of a bunch of different uh, or the seven main types of units of measurement that were established in 1960 uh, in France. For example, we just said uh, earlier that mass, once again, is going to be measured in kilograms. Length is going to be measured in meters. Time is going to be measured in seconds. Amount of substance will be measured in this thing called the mole. Temperature, we're going to use uh, Kelvin. Electric current, we're going to use amps. And luminous intensity, we're going to be using uh, candelas to measure that. So you might be thinking, well, what about things like volume? I don't see volume on here or the amount of space something takes up and other types of measurements as well. Well, those are derived units. And we're going to take a look at derived units next. But understand that these are the seven main uh, units of measurement that were put together and agreed upon at the conference held in France to establish the, the universal SI system of units. And from these, what we can do is we can derive different types of units of measurement. For example, if we take meters, which is a measurement of length, and we have meters times meters times meters, we will have one cubic meter. And one cubic meter is the same thing as 1,000 liters, all right? So you can see that we came up with this unit of measurement for volume or amount of space something takes up by multiplying the meter times the meter times the meter and getting one meter cubed. This is a derived unit. Liters are a derived unit. They're derived by multiplying one of these seven main types of SI units or cubing it and we come up with liters, which is a derived unit of measurement. And that's what we're going to take a look at next. We're going to take a look at SI derived units. All right, so what we're looking at here are the SI derived units. And like we said uh, just a few moments ago, that these are derived units. These are units that are derived from the seven main units that were established. For example, volume is a derived unit, or the liter is a derived unit. When we measure energy, work, or heat, we're going to be uh, measuring this in something called joules, which is another derived unit. It was derived from these three uh, of the seven main types of SI units, right? If we take a look at pressure, we're going to be using the Pascal. And Pascals are a derived unit. They were derived from, once again, three of the seven main types of SI units. Force and weight, we're going to be using the Newton. Same thing here, derived from these three main SI units. And frequency, we're going to be using the Hertz or Hertz. To measure the frequency of a wave and once again that is uh, derived from this unit of measurement right here one of the seven main types of SI units so we can see for example if you have 10 centimeters times 10 centimeters times 10 centimeters you're going to end up with 1,000 cubic centimeters and 1,000 cubic centimeters is the same thing as a liter this liter right here is a derived unit derived from uh, one of the seven main SI units of length, the centimeter or meter, right? So 10 centimeters times 10 centimeters times 10 centimeters is the same thing as a thousand cubic centimeters, which is the same thing as a liter. Okay, so understand that concept of derived units versus the seven main types of SI units.
These are derived from these seven main types of SI units. So now let's take a look at metric prefixes and apply them to the, uh, the SI units and derived units that we've just got done talking about. So what makes the SI system work so well, or the metric system work so well, is that it's based on powers of 10. And uh, what they did in 1960 in France is they came up with about 20 metric prefixes. Uh, what you see in front of you are, are about 12 of those metric prefixes, and there's eight, eight more. But all you are responsible for memorizing for a basic chemistry class would be these 12 or so metric prefixes. For example, if we take a look and work from smallest to biggest here, pico, like a picometer or a picogram or a picobyte, would be uh, 10 to the negative 12th, or 1 trillionth of a meter, for example, if it's a picometer. Right here, the prefix nano means 10 to the negative 9th, which is 1 billionth. So if you have a nanometer, you have 1 billionth of a meter. Right here, you have the prefix micro. Uh, this right here is not a U, it's a Greek letter of the alphabet called mu. Okay, And uh, what micro means is 1 millionth. So if you have a micrometer, that is 1 millionth of a meter. If you have a microsecond, that's 1 millionth of a second, etc., etc. The prefix milli means 1 1,000th. So if you have a millimeter, you have one one thousandth of a meter. Centi means one one hundredth, which uh, if you have a, if you had a centimeter, you would have one one hundredth of a meter. Deci means one tenth. A decimeter is one tenth of a meter, etc., etc. Uh, if we take a look at the base units for length, volume, and mass, we have grams, meters, and liters right here. And if we work our way up, getting bigger here, if I have a decameter, I have ten meters. Prefix for deca means 10. A hectometer would be 100 meters. A kilometer would be 1,000 meters. Kilo means 1,000. A megameter would be a million meters or a megabyte. If you're into computers, is a million bytes of information. A gigabyte would be a billion bytes of information. The prefix giga means a billion. And last but not least, the prefix tera. I think there's five terabyte hard drives out right now. Uh, tera means one, uh, one trillion. 1 trillion. So if you had a, a, a 1 terabyte hard drive, uh, that hard drive can store 1 trillion bytes of information. Okay, so it's important that you memorize all these metric prefixes right here, understand their order, and understand their power of 10 and their meaning. For example, on a test, a teacher might ask you what giga means. Well, it means 10 to the ninth or a billion. They might ask you what milli means. Well, that means uh, 10 to the negative third or 1 1,000th. So what we can do with these metric prefixes now is we can now place them in front of the different units or SI units or derived units. For example, if I, uh, if I put, let's suppose, 1.5 p.m., this means 1.5 pico meters, right? If I put, say, uh, 2.6 uh, DL, that means 2.6 deci liters, deci liters. All right, so let's take a look at how we can start combining these now uh, in a way that will make sense for us later on. Okay, so real quickly, all we're going to do here is work through the, uh, the, the, the tables here. And these are tables that you've already seen on uh, earlier slides in this presentation. And we're going to use these to solve these little problems down here. For example, if I ask you to write 100 milligrams and use the abbreviation for milligram, well, what is milli? Milli is a lowercase m, right? So we'll write 100. Milli is a lowercase m. And what is grams? Well, the abbreviation for grams is a G, so 100 milligrams. There you go. What about 1.5 kilometers? Well, the prefix for kilo, the prefix for kilo is a lowercase k, right? And it looks like we're dealing with meters, kilometers. So meters is a lowercase m. There we go, 1.5 kilometers. What about 15 nanometers? Well, the prefix for nano is a lowercase n. And you got it, meters is a lowercase m, so 15 nanometers. What about 50 liters? Well, we'll go ahead and write 50. And then liters is a capital L. Sometimes you might see it as a lowercase l. Either way, it, uh, it will be correct. What about 25 grams? We'll write 25 with a lowercase g. No metric prefix comes before it because grams is a base unit. What about 1 gigagram? Well, we'll write 1 here. The prefix for giga is a uh, uppercase g. And gram is a lowercase g, so there is one gigagram. So 
this was the SI system and we will learn in a later video uh, how to convert different or between the different SI units for example what if we asked you how many uh, millimeters are there in say one kilometer uh, we will learn how to do that in a separate video so if you liked what you see here go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right hand corner and that will subscribe and I hope this was helpful